Hello, so for today's lesson, we're going to talk about even and odd functions. So when we talk about functions, there's many things you can analyze when looking at the graph of a function, or even by looking at the equation of the function. But one that's very important is actually if the function has any symmetry. So functions may have two types of symmetry. The first type of symmetry that a function can have is what we call y-axis symmetry. So this means if you have an equation whose graph looks something like this, then you can say it has y-axis symmetry. This basically means if you were to do a y-axis reflection or a horizontal reflection, the graph is going to look exactly the same. The second type of symmetry a function can have is called origin symmetry. So a function that looks something like this, for example, has origin symmetry. This means that basically if you were to treat the origin like a swivel, like the center of a swivel, and you rotate this graph 180 degrees, you're going to get the same exact looking graph. Another way to think about it is if you do both an x and y axis reflection, you'll get the same exact graph. Or another way to think about it is that if you were to do an x axis reflection, it actually is the exact same thing as doing a y axis reflection. So if a function satisfies any of those, it then has origin symmetry. So functions that have these type of symmetry can be categorized as specific types of functions. So functions that have natural y-axis symmetry are called even functions. And a function that has natural origin symmetry is called an odd function. So even and odd is the way of categorizing the type of function, but when it's stated that a function is even, it is implied that its graph has y-axis symmetry. If you are told that a function is odd, that implies that the function has origin symmetry. It's actually very easy to remember. Notice odd and origin, they both start with an O, so that's pretty easy to remember. An odd function has origin symmetry, therefore even has y-axis symmetry. So you might be wondering, how about x-axis symmetry? Well, the problem is if a graph has x-axis symmetry, such as this graph, it's not going to be a function. You see, it would fail the vertical line test. So there can be equations that when you graph them give you x-axis symmetry, they just cannot be functions. Actually, the equation for this graph is x is equal to y squared. But this here cannot be expressed as a function. So when we talk about functions having symmetry, we do not include x-axis symmetry because it's not a function. And functions, of course, there could be functions here that behave something like this. And you'll notice that, yes, this, this is a function, but it actually doesn't have any symmetry. It doesn't have symmetry it doesn't have y-axis symmetry nor origin symmetry. So you would say that this function is neither even or odd. So by now, if you are given the graph of a function, it's going to be very obvious to tell if it is an even function or an odd function. But the problem comes now, what if you are given the equation of the function? So the interesting thing is, just given an equation, you can tell if it's going to be even or odd. But really, the only way to figure that out is to perform a test on the equation. So let's go over a quick little concept here having to do with even functions. So let's call this function f of x. Notice here, if we picked some random value of x, let's say, for example, right here, Let's call this a. We don't have to actually give it a number in particular because we're not actually talking real equations here. 
So let's just call this x equal a. So let's take a look at the value of y at x equal to a. So you can say here that, of course, if we plug a into the function, then the value of y is literally just going to be f of a, or f at x equal to a. So that's the value of y. Now notice, what if we pick the opposite value of x? So right here, this value of x would be negative a. So if we pick the point on the graph, we're going to see that here, the value of y is f of negative a. However, the value of y at x equal minus a is the same exact value of y as that at x equal to a. And you can see that this is going to work for any x you pick. So basically here, opposite values of x have the same value of y. If you can prove this for all values of x, then you have proved that the function is even and that it has y-axis symmetry. So basically, there's actually many ways to prove this if you're given the equation of a function. And one way to do that is by, by testing some points. So if you can prove this statement here, that at opposite values of x here, you have the same value of y or the same output, then you have proved that this function is an even function. There's another way to prove this as well, and depending on where you look, you might see this explained in a different way. Some people like to prove if doing a, a y-axis reflection gives you the same function, then you've also proved that it is even. So if you can prove this, then you've also proved that it is um, even. So there's many different ways to think about this. So basically, if you can prove that opposite values of x give you the same value of y, then you have proved that the function is even. Let's take a look at this function here. We have no idea what the graph of this function looks like. Unless, of course, you know transformations, and that's why tr knowing transformations is so useful, because if you know what the parent function is, you can kind of have an idea of what this graph is going to look like. But again, I'm not giving you a graph here. So I can still tell, though, just by testing out this equation, if the graph of this function will have y-axis symmetry or origin symmetry. So let's see what happens if we plug in opposite values of x. So I like to just test random values of x. The easiest values of x we could pick are 1 and negative 1. So let's see what happens if we test the value of y at x equal 1. So we plug 1 into the function, and we're going to get 3 plus 1, which is 4. And now let's see what happens when we input negative 1. Notice here, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Then 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So notice here how these opposite values of x are giving us the same value of y. Now, of course, this could just be a coincidence. You know, we again, we have no idea what this graph looks like. So who's to say it doesn't look like it starts like it's having y-axis symmetry, but then it kind of acts weird later on. So it's always good to kind of test this with a few other points just to confirm that this is always going to work. So for example, if you test opposite values of x at x equal 2, so for example, we'd get 3 times 2 squared. So that would be 12 plus 1, which is 13. And if we test at x equal minus 2, we would also get 12 plus 1, which is 13. So you can kind of start seeing this pattern that no matter what opposite values of x you plug in, you're going to square them anyways. So at the end, you're going to get the same answer regardless of the opposite values of x you pick. So just by having proved this a few times, and you can kind of see the pattern here, you can then finally state that this is going to be 
an even function. So without even knowing what the graph of this looks like, I already know by testing it that it's going to have y-axis symmetry. Therefore, this is an even function. So how can we prove if a function is odd? So let's take a look at an example of an odd function here. So let's kind of do the same concept here. Let's pick opposite values of x. So let's say I pick x equal a. Oh, and let's call this function g of x. So at x equal a, the value of y is going to be g of a. But now let's pick the opposite value of x. So let's say here, negative a. So we can see here that the value of y is going to be g of negative a. Now this graph doesn't look very good, but the concept here is that actually these are supposed to have the same distance apart from each other from the origin. So basically here, like for example, if this was y equals 2, this would be y equals negative 2. So these are going to have opposite values of y. So basically, if you can prove that opposite values of x have opposite values of y, you can then prove that this function has origin symmetry. Therefore, it is an odd function. So basically, the way to prove this is if you can prove that at a value of x, its opposite value of x will have a opposite value of y, then you can prove that it has origin symmetry. Therefore, it is a odd function. So basically what this is saying here is these are opposite values of x. And therefore, when you multiply by a negative, you change the sign. So you get the opposite value of y. So this is just a quick way of showing opposite values of x having opposite values of y. And some other books will try to generalize this for any value of x. So you might see some books say this. Because basically, if you can prove that doing an x-axis reflection is going to look the same as doing a y-axis reflection, so if you see here, this is like showing doing a um, horizontal or y-axis reflection, and this is doing a um, vertical or x-axis reflection. If you can prove that they give you the same looking graph, then you've also proved that it has origin symmetry. So again, there's many different ways to prove this concept. But I think the best way to prove if the equation of a function is even or odd is just to test opposite values of x. So let's see here if what happens if we test opposite values of x. Again, I think 1 is probably the easiest number to work with. So let's plug in 1 into this function. So we'll get 1 cubed plus 2 times 1, which would be 1 plus 2, which is 3. But now let's see what happens when we plug in the opposite value of x, negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1. So negative 1 cubed is actually negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So notice here we'll get negative 3. So notice here now that we have opposite values of y. Now, once again, this could just be a coincidence. This may just be happening once and never again. So that's why, again, it's a good idea. So that's why, again, it's a good idea to test maybe another value of x. So if we test f of 2, we get 2 cubed plus 2 times 2, which would be 8 plus 4, which would be 12. And if we test negative 2, we'll get negative 2 cubed plus 2 times negative 2, which would be negative 8 minus 4, which would be negative 12. So once again, you see this pattern repeating that opposite x's are giving us opposite y's. And again, after you've done tested a few points, you kind of start to see a pattern here. And you can see that no matter what opposite values of x you get, you're going to get opposite values of y. 
Therefore, you can determine that this function is an odd function because it has origin symmetry. So going back to this function here, which was even, you can kind of see something interesting. Because um, remember, when we plugged in opposite values of x, we ended up squaring them. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you plugged in a positive or negative, you squared it. So 5 squared and negative 5 squared are the exact same value. They're both going to be positive 25. And this is true for any opposite values um, that you square. So you can tell here, notice that this exponent here is even. So basically here, if all the x's or all the inputs are being raised to an even power, it actually, again, it doesn't matter if you're plugging in opposite values of x, you're raising it to an even power. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, you will get the same values of y. Therefore, basically, if you could see that you have only even exponents, it's going to be a giveaway that the function is even. Now, this plus 1 here doesn't have an exponent, but if you see that you're adding or subtracting a number, that would be considered even because, again, as you see here, the plus 1 doesn't change in this case here. So it doesn't matter what happens here, you're going to always add 1. That does, that's the sign of that 1 is never changing. So you, it keeps you with the same answer. So if you ever see that you're adding or subtracting by a number, you consider that as like an even operation. Now going back to this function, which was odd, notice here that the exponent is 3 and the exponent is 1. Even though you don't see the 1, it's technically there. So you can tell here when you plug in opposite values of x, the sign is going to change. Because when you raise a negative number to an odd exponent, it's going to stay negative. So, because again, if you do 2 cubed, this would be 8. But if you do negative 2 cubed, you get negative 8. So you can tell here if all the signs change because you're raising them to an odd exponent, then the value of y is going to be opposite. So a big giveaway that an equation is going to have origin symmetry or be an odd function is if all of the exponents that you're raising the x to or the input to are odd. So that's a big giveaway as well. So taking a look at this equation, let's see what happens if we test opposite values of x. So let's test 1 and negative 1. So if we plug in 1, we get 3 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 7, which is going to end up being 3 plus 5 minus 7, which at the end is going to be 1. Now let's see what happens when we plug in negative 1. So we get 3 times negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 minus 7. So this is going to end up being 3 minus 5 minus 7. So notice here, we're going to get negative 9. So notice the opposite values of x are giving us different values of y. If you can prove this just once, immediately you know that this function is neither even nor odd. So you just say it is neither even nor odd. So of course, this will have a graph, but graphically, it will have none of the main symmetries. And a giveaway here is notice we have a mix of even and odd exponents, because that's an exponent of 1. So immediately, this is a giveaway as well, that even without testing, just by looking at the equation, this is going to be neither even nor odd. So, here's a list of three different functions. So, identify if the functions below are going to be even, odd, or neither. Figure this out by testing it. So again, you have multiple different ways of testing it. In my opinion, the best way is to just test multiple values of x, and eventually you're going to see a pattern forming that's always going to be true. So... However you choose to do this, identify as even, odd, or neither. So pause this video, and in about five seconds, I will, the answers will show. And there you have it. 
the first function is odd, the second function is neither, the third function is even. It is important to be able to back up your response by proving it. But again, if you also use the trick and look at the exponents, it should also be a giveaway the type of function it's going to be. So, not all functions will it be obvious if it's even, odd, or neither, like we did before by looking at the exponents. This one here has an absolute value, so it's a little bit trickier to determine by looking at the equation if it's going to have any symmetry. So really, again, you will never fail if you try the tests. So let's see what happens if we try opposite values of x. So as always, let's work with 1, because 1 is the easiest number to work with. So absolute value of 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 2. Absolute value of 1 is 1, so we get 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 2, which is 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. So at x equal 1, the value of y is negative 2. Now let's plug in negative 1, the opposite value of x. So we get absolute value of negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 minus 2. So absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So we get 2 over negative 3. And of course, we get different values of y. Because opposite values of x gave us different values of y, we can now tell that this function will be neither even nor odd. So this is actually neither. We can also determine if piecewise functions have any symmetry. So taking a look at this function, you can see that there's a piece to the left of 0 and a piece to the right of 0. So there may be symmetry here. So let's see what happens if we test opposite values of x. As always, let's work with 1. That's a good number to work with. So if we test 1, we plug 1 into the second piece of this piecewise function because 1 is a number greater than 0. So we get 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 2 plus 3, which is 5. And now if we test negative 1, we're going to plug negative 1 into the first piece of the piecewise function because negative 1 is less than 0. So we get negative 2 times negative 1 plus 3, which would end up being 2 plus 3, which is 5. But hey, again, we don't know. Maybe this is a coincidence. So it doesn't hurt to test another x. So let's test 2 and negative 2. So if we plug in 2, we're going to plug it into the second piece, which would be 4 plus 3, which would be 7. And if we plug in negative 2, we'll plug it into the first piece, which once again will give us 4 plus 3, which is 7. So you can kind of see the pattern here. Whatever opposite values of x you plug into this equation, you're always going to keep getting the same values of y. After you do it two or three times, you kind of start to see that this is always going to work. Therefore, this piecewise function is actually an even function. Now, the beauty of identifying functions as even or odd is that if you know the type of symmetry they have, you really only have to know how to graph one half of the graph. Because if you know that it has even symmetry, you know that the other side of the graph is going to be exactly the same values of y. And if you know it has origin symmetry, then you know that the opposite values of x will have opposite values of y. So if you're ever creating a table to graph a function, you know you really only have to focus on one side of the graph. And the other side is just going to reflect depending on the symmetry it has. So, for example, if I gave you a graph that looked like this. So let's call this, fun let's call this function f of x. And I'm only giving you half the graph of this function. And I want to know, how does the other half of this graph look like? Well, if I'm telling you f of x is even, this implies that this function has y-axis symmetry. Therefore, the other half should basically be symmetrical along the y-axis, meaning for opposite values of x, you have the same value of y. So graphically, it's going to look 
something like that. That's how the other half of the graph would look like. Now here, let's say I give you the, the first half or the left half of function g of x, but I were to tell you that g of x is an odd function, how will the right half of this graph end up looking like? Well, the fact that you know that it is an odd function implies that it has origin symmetry. Therefore, opposite values of x should have opposite values of y. So you can identify that this is going to look something like that. So here I'm giving you two graphs, and I'm only giving you half of the graph. But this graph is supposed to continue forever. So knowing that the first function is an odd function and that the second function is an even function, go ahead and complete these graphs. So pause this video, and in about five seconds, I will upload the answers. And there you have it. This is what these functions will look like fully completed. So another usage of knowing if a function is even or odd is in allowing you to identify missing information. So taking a look at this table, here we have the first row explains values of x, and the second row tells us the corresponding values of y. Now notice that this table has some missing information here, and it looks like it's impossible to fill. However, I'm telling you that the function that this graph represents is even. So if you know that a function is even, that implies that it has y-axis symmetry. Therefore, opposite values of x give you opposite values of y. Now, mind you, when you write a table, you should always write from smallest values of x to biggest value of x. Always write from left to right. Same thing if the graph is going downwards or if it's vertical. You should always write the values of x going from smallest to biggest as you work your way down. So it doesn't matter the orientation of the table, just as long as you know how to interpret it. So notice here, I know I'm giving you the value of x minus 5, so that means I'm implying that I'm also giving you the value of x positive 5. And if I'm giving you the value of x1, that implies that I'm also giving you the value of x negative 1. Because again, we're, we're saying that this function is even, so you need to know opposite values of x. So if opposite values of x have the same values of y, that means 1 and negative 1 should both have the same value of y, negative 3. Therefore, 5 and negative 5 should also have the same value of y, 2. So there you go. The table has been completed. So taking a look at this table, there's also missing information. However, I'm telling you that g of x is odd. So that means that the points at this table represents are going to come from an odd function, meaning a function that has origin symmetry, therefore a function where opposite values of x give you opposite values of y. Therefore, given this the information in this table, you should be able to complete it. So the opposite values of x, of course, are going to be 3 and 7. So 7 and negative 7 better have opposite values of y. So at negative 7, we should have 1. And here, at negative 3, we should have negative 4, which is the opposite value of y, then the 1 at x equal to 3. And there we go. The table has now been completed. So, using the same logic, here I'm giving you two tables. One table represents the points for f of x, and the second table shows us the points in table format for function g of x. Now, if I didn't say any other information, this would be impossible to fill. This would be impossible to fill. However, I am telling you that function f is an odd function and function g is an even function. So knowing that information, you can actually complete these tables. So take a few minutes, pause this video, and give this a try. When you unpause this video, the answer should show up in about five seconds. And there you have it. Notice for the first function, all opposite values of x are giving us opposite values of y. And for the second table, 
all opposite values of x are giving us the same values of y. So that completes this lesson on even and odd functions. This is a pretty important skill going on. Again, just by looking at the graph of a function, it's very obvious to tell. The, tr the difficult part comes when you are just given the equation and asked to identify if it's even or odd. But again, the best way to do this is to test it and play around with different values of x and see what happens when you plug in opposite values of x. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward concept. So I hope you found this video helpful and good luck to you. Bye.